know some of y'all funny. See? <clears throat> I saw a few more of those come home comments. Alan, come home. Come home. No, I ain't coming home. I'm staying away from home. I'm running away from home. Shoot. Hey, I don't care if my hair is thinning on top. If I can keep that thin hand for the next eight to ten years, I will. I ain't coming home. Fuck home. <laughs> Fuck home. I ain't coming home. No. I will deal with my thinning hair for as long as I can. Because I got hair. Shoot. Actually, a couple guys gave me some tips in the comment section on how to strengthen and regrow my hair or something. So I'm going to check them out. See if they legit. Yeah, some guys told me some supplements to take and food to eat. That was, like one, I think, was carrot. Yeah, one was carrot. Some guy said, Alan, you should eat a lot of carrots and drink a lot of carrot juice and your hair will regrow. I'm going to have to do my research on that before I believe it. But, uh, yeah, man. As long as... As long as I got some hair and as long as I own a wave cap, I'm going to continue to do what I do. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, somebody challenged me already. I always get these challenges. Anytime I say I'm going to take a break from doing free videos, I always have one or two people who challenge. They say, no, you ain't, Alan. I don't believe you. I believe you are going to come back. And, um, <clears throat> oh, man. Hold on. I thought I turned off my phone. Sorry about that. I thought I turned off my phone. Um, lost my train of thought. I hate that. Because, you know, I don't do the scripts or I don't even do bullet points. I just talk what's known as extemporaneously, meaning off the top of my head. Oh, I know what I was talking about. Um, yeah, somebody challenged me because anytime I say I'm going on some type of, you know, break or sabbatical, like, for example, early this year, when I announced that I wasn't going to do any any free videos, month of April, I had about three or four people say, you lying, <laughs> you lying. Yes, you are. I guarantee you do. Like two, three, four, five video. And sure enough, I did break. I did break my 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 vow. Yeah, actually the last week, maybe even the last week and a half of April, I did end up posting like three or four videos. I did that last year. Yeah, if you remember last year, I had said I wasn't going to post any videos, free videos, for the entire month of May. And in them last like four days, I went like pretty much like four weeks. And then starting with the 28th of May, I ended up posting a video like the 28th, I think the 28th, the 30th, and the 31st. So three of the last four days of May, I ended up posting a video last year in May, even though I had said I was going to go from May 1st to May 31st without posting any free videos. And then I did that, um, I think I was pretty disciplined. Another time last year, I said I wasn't going to post any free videos between roughly mid-July and mid-August. I think I only posted one. I made. I think I did post one. But other than that, I went that entire, like, roughly four to five week period between mid-July and mid-August. And then early this year, I said I was going to go the entire month of April, but I ended up posting like, I think four or five towards the end. But yeah, starting with Monday of next week, Monday of next week, all the way up until somewhere between roughly the middle of September, my plan is not, to, I'm not going to be posting any free, I'm only going to be posting Patreon exclusive videos. But, I ain't gonna lie, there's probably a two to three percent chance I might slip in one video here, one video there, based on my past history. That was redundant, past history, <laughs> based on my history. Uh, 
Yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, yeah, starting with Monday, I'm I'm my plan is only going to be doing Patreon exclusive videos for the entire month of April. I mean entire month of August, not April. August and um the first two, two and a half weeks of September. Um okay. And you know my weakness. My brother was just teasing me about this. He said, bro. Yeah, my, my brother actually, you know, I told you sometimes my brother gets on me about stuff. And my brother called me up. Yep. I'll admit, my brother called me up. My brother Steven. He called me out, man. And you know, you, you need to be called out sometimes. My brother, it was lighthearted, but he, he said, he said, bro, you know, sometimes you're a hypocrite. You're a more one hypocrite. I said, how so? He said, because in your more one book, one of the things you teach men to do is not to be reactive to the things women do and say. Not to be reactive. To always remain cool, calm, and collected in the face of women's criticisms, harsh, subjective criticisms in the face of women's personal insults and jabs. That's one of the things you teach men to do is not to be emotionally or egotistically reactive to things women do and things women say to you to try to get under your skin and to try to agitate you or to even, in, in more serious cases, try to emasculate you, which is true. That is the advice I give men. But then my brother said, but yet, I don't know if you do it for entertainment or if you're genuinely being reactive. But you react to a lot of things your haters and critics say. If somebody says this about you on somebody's podcast or somebody's live stream, you have a response and rebuttal for it, which is basically representative of reactive behavior. And he's like, why do you do that? Uh, other than for maybe you trying to... Now, I, I've already confessed that half of my motivation is, it's just, there's a, a, a follower I have named David. He was one of the first guys to call me out. He said, Alan, I think at least half the reason why you react and offer responses and rebuttals to your, your haters and critics is because it gives you entertaining content. If only for 5, 10, 15 minutes, it gives you entertaining content, which is true. So, yeah, some of it ain't going to lie. Some of, some of my reactionary behavior is you could say for entertainment purposes. But some of it is genuine. At times it's genuine. Like if somebody like lies about something I said or misquotes something I said, puts words in my mouth, that shit tends to be genuine. That shit tends to be genuine. Or when somebody tries to blatantly undermine my credibility. Undermine my credibility. And speaking of undermining my credibility, there's a young brother in the black side of YouTube that most of my non-black listeners and viewers wouldn't be familiar with. But people on what, what they nicknamed the, the black side of YouTube, the black neighborhood of YouTube. There's a young brother who I've addressed in a couple videos before in the last year or so, named Edward Anderson. As you can see, we've had our eye on you for some time now, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. One of my followers pointed me to a video that Edward Anderson recently did where he made an interesting comment. I wish I had an audio clip, but I'll just go ahead. He was talking about stuff to do with basically who he feels is legit and not legit within the black manus aspect of the manosphere, who's legit and who's not legit. And when it came to me, he said, he said, I like Alan Roger Curry. I respect Alan Roger Curry, which was a compliment. He said, I like and respect Alan Roger Curry. But then he said, despite the fact that he frowns on being red peel or something to that effect. He said, I like and respect Alan Roger Curry, despite the fact that he frowns on more red pill commentary and content.
Edward, if you ever watch my videos, I think you know what's coming. Insert dog face here. Edward, man, come on, man. Brother, 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 brother. Where did that comment come from? Where did that comment come from? <laughs> Let Uncle Alan Roger Curry break it down for you, man. And you know my ego's about to come out. Because I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. And you can you can quote me and everybody listening to this video can quote me. It ain't a motherfucker on YouTube more hardcore red pill than Alan Roger Curry. Quote me on that. It ain't a motherfucker on YouTube that's more hardcore red pill than this brother you listening to right here. I dare you. I triple. You know my triple dares. I triple dare you to name any motherfucker on YouTube that's more hardcore red pill than me. I triple dare you too. I'm the most hardcore red pill motherfucker on YouTube. Quote me on that. Shoot, man, are you serious? Now, there's a handful of brothers. I ain't going to name names, but there's a handful of brothers. I would say that are as red pill as me, are either as red pill or come close to being as red pill as me. But you talking about somebody more red pill than me? Man, ain't nobody on, ain't nobody on YouTube more red pill than me. Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, ain't nobody more red pill than me. Nobody. Here's what you're confusing and conflating, as do a lot of guys on YouTube, and particularly black men. You all confuse and conflate red pill with being black pill. And I've said this multiple times before. A lot of you guys confuse and conflate being red pill with being black pill. A lot of you guys who think you're red pill or who classify yourselves as red pill on further examination, most of you all are, are black pill. Most, I would say just about all you guys who think you're more red pill than me, you're really black pill. You're not red pill, you're black pill. And that's what I frown on. I frown on black pill content and commentary. I don't frown on red pill. There's a big distinction between red pill and black pill. Just like within the parameters of my four modes of verbal communication, I always have to point out there's a difference between mode one behavior and mode four behavior. Because a lot of guys tend to confuse and conflate mode, sometimes mode four with mode one. Just like a lot of guys confuse and conflate black pill with red pill. For the upteen time, what's the difference? I'll go, the, I'll, I'll quickly highlight for the millionth time the difference between the four pills. How do you know when you blue pill, purple pill, red pill, or black pill? I would say the starting point has relates to how you evaluate women's behavior based on how you ideally want their behavior to be versus how it actually is. That's the starting point of determining what pill you're in, is how you go about evaluating women's behavior based on how you want it to be, ideally want their behavior to be versus how it actually is. Start with blue pill. When you blue pill, Almost everything about your, your evaluation of women's behavior would fall into the category of either naive, naive slash unenlightened, naive slash unenlightened, and very idealistic and unrealistically optimistic. Naive slash unenlightened and idealistic slash unrealistically optimistic about your evaluation. In other words, when you're blue pill, you look at damn near all women as being these innocent, wholesome creatures who can do no wrong. Or at minimum, 
you look at the vast majority of women as having prudish, semi-prudish, and strictly monogamous tendencies and proclivities as opposed to more promiscuous and or polyamorous tendencies and proclivities. That's when you're blue pill. So one of the ways you can tell you're blue pill is when either something happens to you, like say your wife cheats on you, your fiance cheats on you, your girlfriend cheats on you, or one of your best friends, their wife, fiance, or girlfriend cheats on them. And you're like, damn, I would have never expected that to happen. Oh my God, Linda cheated on you? Oh my God, she looks so sweet and she looks so innocent and so wholesome. I would have never thought Linda would cheat on you with your coworker. Oh my God. And that blows my mind that that happened. You're like genuinely surprised and shit. Or a woman who you thought went, you, you uh, some woman named Regina that goes to church every Sunday. And because she goes to church every Sunday, you thought she was this prude or semi-prude who would never do anything kinky. And then you found out she participated in an orgy. And you're like shocked. You're like, oh my God, Regina? Regina? Are you serious? She's like a Sunday school teacher. And you're telling me she watches porn and engaged in an orgy before? Oh my God, I don't believe that. See, that would mean you're blue pill, man. That would mean you're blue pill because you're naive. You're genuinely shocked and surprised when you find out that women have a more scandalous and promiscuous or polyamorous sexual nature about them. It like shocks you. Red pill. Red pill is when almost just the opposite. Nothing surprises you about women. When you find out that women cheat, you ain't surprised. You almost feel like I expected that shit to happen. That's how women are. When women get two or more sexual lovers at the same time, that shit ain't going to raise your eyebrows. You're going to be like, shit, I didn't expect no different. When you find out women Watch porn a lot and play with the pussies every day, every other day. You ain't tripping out. Even if you, even if that woman goes to church every Sunday or is a Sunday school teacher, you ain't tripping out because you know that's how women are. When you realize that women want womanizing alpha males for good dick and sexually undesirable beta males for non-sexual attention and financial provision, that don't shock you and it don't anger you. You're just like, that's how women are. Anything to do with women being promiscuous and or polyamorous doesn't raise your eyebrows or shock you. Anything to do with women being hypergamous and or sexually duplicitous. Any one of those three things, promiscuous and or polyamorous, hypergamous or sexually duplicitous, it don't raise your eyebrows at all. It don't cause you to become angry, bitter, or resentful. Your attitude is basically like, that's how women are. That's just how they are. You got to adjust to it. That's how they are. That's red pill. That's red pill. Is when you look at, if I had to give the animal analogy I like to give, if you're an animal lover and you went to the jungle, the Serengeti, and you saw a lion eating a zebra or a gazelle, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't know lions do that. Oh my God. I didn't know lions were these vicious eating creatures who eat other animals. Oh my God. Blue pill. If you saw a lion eating a zebra or gazelle, he was like, yeah, that's what lions do. That's, what, that's, that's their nature. That's who they are. That's what they do. That's what they do. Red pill. Black pill is when once you become red pill, you go into an indefinite state of what's known as red pill rage. Red pill rage, meaning that when you get enlightened on the true nature of women, they're both their true sexual nature as well as their true manipulative, materialistic, and hypergamous nature, you become angry about it. You become bitter about it. You become resentful about it. You begin to look at women as the enemy or as some sort of adversary. 
and you want to get on YouTube and whine and bitch and complain about women's fuckery all the time and how they're fucked up and how this aspect of their behavior is fucked up and this aspect of their behavior is fucked up. And that's that's your whole world revolves. That's black pill, motherfucker. That ain't red pill. That ain't red pill. That's black pill. If if you're if you're a content creator here on YouTube and just about all your content commentary centers around commentary that has connotations or undertones of anger, bitterness, resentment, or even worse, misogyny, you're black pill. You're not red pill. You're black pill. And again, there's a lot of motherfuckers on YouTube that think that they're red pill or even hardcore red pill that are actually black pill. I am red pill. I am hardcore red pill, but I am not black pill. I am not black pill at all. I don't have no anger towards women. I don't treat women like they're the enemy or some type of adversary because I want to fuck them. Matter of fact, I'm in a relationship with a woman right now, as some of you probably picked up on my last video. Now, to clear up a rumor, I kind of almost gave an implication that my current romantic companion is pregnant with my baby. No, that, that hasn't happened yet. She is not pregnant yet. But 99% chance that, that that's going to happen in the foreseeable future. So, yeah, to make it publicly official, yes, I am in a relationship. I ain't going to show no pictures. But motherfuckers will say, show me a receipt, show me a receipt. No, you know I'm a discreet individual. And for now, I'll keep her name and face discreet. She's younger than me. And for all you brothers who hate black women, she's black. I know some, I, I know some brothers think I'm I'm not into black women that I'm only into white women and I have had my share of white female casual sex partners. Actually, I've never had a serious relationship though with a white woman, even though I've had a lot of casual sex with white women and non-black women in general. But just about all of my real serious relationships have been with black women. Yeah, a lot of you guys, man, who think y'all red pill, y'all actually black pill. And that's what y'all need to face the reality of. Again, man, if everything about your content and commentary, assuming you're a content creator on YouTube, is about moaning about this aspect of women's behavior, bitching about this aspect of women's behavior, complaining about this aspect of women's behavior, you ain't red pill. You ain't red pill, man. You black pill. You are not red pill. You are black pill. When have you ever seen me whining, bitching, and, and, and complaining about women's behavior? I expose a lot of things about women, but I don't be on here bitching about women's behavior. That's all I do for the most part is I expose. I expose a lot of things about women's manipulative, materialistic, and hypergamous nature, as well as I expose a lot of things about their true sexual nature as far as them being promiscuous, polyamorous, and or... Um, duplicitous, adulterous, unfaithful. I'll expose things, but I don't bitch about it. Because I understand that that's who women are. Women are who they are. I've said that two million times on YouTube. And then the final pill, of course, is purple pill. That really genuinely, generally only applies to men who are like a woman's dating coach or, man, why are people calling me? A woman's dating coach or a woman's relationship coach, or something of that nature. Those are the main people who tend to become purple people. Your normal average guy is not going to be purple. Well, there might be a few, but... My brother, if I had to tease him a bit, my brother's at least a little bit purple pill. Yeah, my brother, my older brother, he's, he's a little bit, just a little bit purple pill. But yeah, purple pill is when you have red pill knowledge, wisdom, and insight But you want to maintain, emphasize, and endorse a lot of idealistic and optimistic beliefs and attitudes and philosophies related to dating and relationships. That would make you purple pill. You have red pill knowledge, wisdom, and insight, but either for business purposes or even just for social purposes, you tend to more so promote 
very optimistic and idealistic beliefs at it and traditional. If I had one more word, traditional. I optimistic, idealistic, and traditional slash old fashioned beliefs, attitudes, and philosophies related to dating and relationships. That's when you're purple pill. But yeah, out of those four, I'm red pill. I am not black. I'm not blue pill. I'm for damn sure not blue pill. I would say I'm not purple pill, although maybe 1% to 2% of the time I might be guilty of being purple pill a little bit. But generally, I'm not purple pill. And I'm definitely not black pill. Because again, I don't have any anger, resentment, or bitterness, or misogynistic feelings towards women. For me, women are who they are. You ain't gonna never hear me say, all oh, women are bitches, all oh, women are cunts. They're no good, scandalous bitches and cunts. You never gonna hear Alan Curry say that shit. That's what bitch made motherfuckers say. Motherfuckers who couldn't handle being rejected by women, being ignored by women, getting manipulated by women. That's who couldn't, that's, that's the motherfuckers who do that type of bitching. It's primarily guys who got cheated on by women got rejected by hundreds of women, got ignored by hundreds if not thousands of women, or got viciously manipulated and exploited by women. They're going to get on here and bitch. And speaking of that, this is bringing me to my final point. Now this more so is going to relate to my Patreon subscribers. <laughs> But I'll go ahead and tell a little bit of it for my free listeners and viewers. On my last Patreon exclusive video on Monday, I offered a confession of sorts, even though, truthfully, this is something I confessed before. This was my first time confessing. I confessed about probably three to five times when I did my blog talk radio show between 2007 in 2016, and I confessed at least once, if not twice, before here on YouTube. But what was my confession? I was talking about the theme of my Patreon exclusive video was how beta males inadvertently or unknowingly or unconsciously help out, help womanizing alpha males run game on women by being a combination of financially generous and or by allowing women to easily and indefinitely exploit them for their non-sexual time, attention, and companionship. And one of the things I said is that I said when I was in my 20s and very early 30s, I used to actually help some women manipulate beta males. Now, I'd say probably 95% of the guys, my Patreon subscribers who listened to that video, they weren't surprised by that because they've heard me say it before. But I got at least two or three inbox messages from guys like, damn, Alan, damn, man, that's cold, man. You used, so you used to help women manipulate beta males? Damn, Allie, you got to be honest, man. That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. And most of that commentary was lighthearted. Nobody viciously attacked me. But one guy in particular, he brought up the fact that one time, and I, if you remember, I did a response video to this last year. There was one time, the guy who I beefed the most on YouTube, who's actually, I heard, leaving YouTube, um, me up sitting in Ali, he once did a live stream, I think it was last year, where he said, the reason why Alan Roger Curry doesn't go in on black women and never harshly criticize black women is because he's benefited from black female fuckery. He's benefited from black female fuckery. That's why he doesn't attack black female fuckery because he's benefited from it. So this guy who recently responded to Monday's Patreon exclusive video, he said, man, Alan, you, you confirming what well, me, I'm sitting there and Ali said about you. He said, you don't go in on women, and particularly black women, because you benefited from their fuckery. But now you take a step further. It's like you said, you taught women fuckery. <laughs> you taught women fuckery. Yes and no. 
Here's the thing. Number one, I cleared this up before. I never. Oh, another thing Obsidian has said about me is he said, Alan even admitted that himself. Alan even admitted that himself. No, I didn't. I've never said that I've benefited from black female fuckery. I've never said that. I've never said that I've benefited specifically from black female fuckery. I've never said that. So that was a lie. Now, here's the aspect more than any other aspect that I would say I've benefited from what you would argue is women's fuckery is women being adulterous and unfaithful. Women cheating on their husbands, fiancés, and boyfriends. Yeah, I've, I've admitted that multiple times that I've benefited from that between the age of roughly 17 and 37. Hell yeah, I benefited from it. I never tried to hide that or deny it. Yeah, I benefited from the fact that women were sexually duplicitous and even more so adulterous and unfaithful. I benefited from that shit. But the reason why I don't have any regrets about it because that's what helps me be able to help you guys, enlighten you guys. I wouldn't have the same body of knowledge, wisdom, and insight if I had never been a woman's other man. And I've said before, to me, if a guy calls himself a dating coach, but he's never even two or three times been a woman's other man, he ain't worth listening to. I've said that before multiple times. You can quote me on that. If a guy calls himself some type of game advisor, dating coach, dating advisor, pickup artist, but he's never, ever been a woman's other man, he ain't worth listening to. He don't know shit. All he knows is theory. He don't know shit from practical experience. He just knows theory. He don't know shit. Quote me on that. I've been a woman's other man anywhere from 35 to 40 times between the age of, uh, starting with the age of 17 all the way up until roughly the age of 37. I was a woman's other man anywhere from 35 to 40 times. That's why I know my shit. That's why I know my shit. All these other motherfuckers just talking, man. They don't know their shit. I know how to fuck another dude's bitch. I know how to do it. If I wanted to do it to this day, I could still do it. Yeah, I'm being cocky. If I wanted to do it to this day, I would still be able to do it. But I happen to stop around the age of 38 because I just had a bit of a change of heart. But yeah, man, here's my thing, man. You know, about regret and or empathy towards beta males. Obviously, by the fact that I became a book author and a dating coach means I changed my ways. Instead of just solely and exclusively benefiting from women's true nature, I started exposing their true nature to men to wake them up, to wake them up and help them out. So I've already made up for it with my career as a, a book author and a dating coach. But here's what I will say about the women that I taught to take advantage of men who were basically mold two or mold three. I don't regret that shit. Why? Because most of y'all motherfuckers are trying to manipulate them. That's right. If I had to divide beta males into two categories, there's one I empathize with and one I don't. If a guy has gotten taken advantage of a woman, whether it's his wife, fiance, long-term girlfriend, or just a woman he was interested in dating, but but didn't quite get to the point of dating her. And the reason why he got taken advantage of her, got taken advantage of by that woman was simply because he was naive and unenlightened. Naive and unenlightened and uneducated. He was blue pill. He was naive and unenlightened. I have genuine empathy for those guys. And those are the guys, that's most of my clients now that I work with and teach them to be to, to become more awake and enlightened. So I, I always have and continue to have empathy for that group of beta males. But here's the guys who I don't have empathy for. If you're one of these motherfuckers that's trying to get in women's pants by lying to them, misleading and manipulating them, and toying with their emotions, man, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I would to this day teach women how to fuck over you. Hell yeah. I hope you get fucked over. I hope women take your heart and put it in a shredder and shred it to pieces. Yeah, I said it. God 
goddamn right I said it. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. If y'all remember a video from last year where I said that, I said, I said, y'all lucky I wasn't born a beautiful, sexy woman with the same degree of knowledge, wisdom, and insight I have about men's true nature and women's true nature. Dude, I would, I would be in the manipulative time waster hall of fame because I would have manipulated so many motherfuckers. If I was a beautiful, sexy woman, I would have manipulated the shit out of you motherfuckers. So all you motherfuckers out there using indirect game and dishonesty and manipulation to try to get in women's pants, for example, you giving women a misleading impression that you want to be their next long-term boyfriend or future husband when you know you're just trying to fucking dump, man, I hope you get manipulated like a motherfucker. I hope women shred you. I hope women take all your money. I hope women waste all your time. I want them to. I will teach them to. Hell yeah, God damn it! I said it. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. I will teach them to. And it will force you motherfuckers to become more one. It will force you motherfuckers to become more one. That's right. It will force you motherfuckers to become more one. See, a lot of you, you nice guys out here think, well, Alan, don't you have empathy for me? Because I'm I'm being a polite, nice guy with women. I'm not trying to do anything treacherous. I'm, I'm, I'm a polite, nice guy. Motherfucker, you still manipulating women. I pointed this out before. Here's where a lot of you guys don't understand. And this relates more to mode two guys than mode three guys. Mode three guys are more of the blatant liars and manipulators. Mode two guys are guys who just are, their problem is they're overly polite, overly cautious, and vague and ambiguous. Yeah, my nickname for Mo2 two guys is the Mo2 nice guys. The pleasant postponers and or Mo2 nice guys. Mo3 would be the phony pretenders or the Mo3 liars, manipulators, and verbal cowards. Mo4 would be the angry, bitter, revenge seekers, and the misogynist and borderline misogynist. In Mo 1, my nickname is the upfront, self-assured, straight shooters. Upfront, straightforward, upfront, self-assured, straight shooters. But back to you Mo 2 guys, a lot of you Mo 2 nice guys think you ain't doing nothing wrong compared to say the Mo 3 liars, manipulators. Yes, you are. Niceness is a subtle form of manipulation. Yes, it is. Kindness is a subtle form of manipulation. Yes, it is. Financial generosity is a, is a form. I wouldn't even say a subtle form. It's a form of manipulation, such as treating a woman to breakfast, lunch, dinner. Here's my question. Here's how I prove if you manipulate or you're not manipulating. Would you be nice and flattering and entertaining with a woman if she told you up front that she was a lesbian and had no desire to date or have sex with any man? Would you still be kind to her? Would you still be polite to her? Would you still be well-mannered to her, flattering and entertaining? If the answer is yes, you're a non-manipulative man. If the answer is no, you're a manipulator. Would you still offer to treat a woman to breakfast, lunch, dinner, movie, concert? If she told you up front that she was a, a, a lesbian who had no interest in dating men or having sex with men, would you still treat her to breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Huh? If she told you she just had a transgender change and now she got a dick between her legs, would you still treat her to breakfast, lunch, and dinner? No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't quit lying. No, you wouldn't. So you'd be a manipulative. If the answer is yes, you still would, then you're not manipulative. But if the answer is no, you're manipulative. You're, you're a manipulator. If you're spending a boatload of time with women, hanging out with them as platonic friends in a disingenuous manner, but the woman told you up front that she was a lesbian or that she just had a transgender operation, she got a dick between her legs, would you still be hanging out with this person? 
for multiple hours a day, multiple days per week, multiple weeks per month? If the answer is no, you're a manipulator. You're a manipulator. So don't give me that nice guy shit. You're a manipulator. And for all you guys who are manipulative, I want you to experience pain. I want you to know how it feels to have your heart shredded. Yes, I do. Yeah, I said it. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you order the code red? I did the job. Did you order the code red? You're goddamn right I did. Yeah, I said it. I want you to. I want you to know how it feels to have your time exploited, to have your money exploded. I want you to know how it feels. Now, some guy right now is saying, well, and you, you're basically contributing to guys becoming black pill. That's not my intention. But yeah, that could happen. But that's not my intention. But I definitely want you to make the transition from blue pill to red pill. I did a video just a couple weeks ago where I said that's my challenge is to make help men transition from blue pill to red pill without transitioning from red pill to black pill. It's a tricky, slippery slope. But yeah, if nothing else, man, it will force you to be more one, man. Be upfront with women about why you're really talking to them. Be upfront with women about why you really want to share their company. Fuck the bullshit. If you're trying to fucking dump, have the balls to tell a woman you're trying to fucking dump. I do. I've told women over the course, starting with the age of 22, I've told women to their face that all I wanted to do was fucking dump them. I've told them that to their face. Have you? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I have. I've told women the only reason I'm talking to you is because I want you to suck my dick. I've literally, my friends can verify that, my frat brothers can verify that, my older brother can verify that. I've told women to their face that the only reason I'm spending time with you is because I want to fuck you for a couple weeks and then leave you the fuck alone. I've told women that to their face. Have you? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. I've told women to their face I wanted to fuck their sister, wanted to fuck their best friend, wanted to fuck their roommate, wanted to fuck their mother, wanted to fuck their daughter, their cousin. Have you? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. No, because you don't have big balls like Alan Roger Curry. I do. I don't bullshit women. When I want something from a woman sexually, I tell her to her face, even if it means me getting rejected in the first 10 seconds of the conversation. I tell them to their face. Do you? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Marinate on that. Now, for my Patreon exclusive subscribers today, I want to just ask you guys, what's holding you back? Huh? What's holding you back? I know at least one thing that's holding you back is that some of y'all care too much about what people, other people think. And so the, the, the theme of my Patreon exclusives portion today is going to be zero fucks. Zero fucks. Why do you care so much about what other people think about what you do and how you do it and what you say and how you say it? Why? Why do you care? Join me in my Patreon exclusive portion.